there it is right okay so this tab is here on my blog which is not the grubstreetjournal.com and it's the latest uh, the, the latest blog that I've done the Judaist ein Scheide. it's me who decides who is a Jew uh, and the title then goes on to but flowers distilled though they with winter meet least but their show their substance still leaves sweet now that's from uh, Shakespeare's sonnet number five and um, I've got some analysis of that and I just wanted to um, get on to that as the metaphor in the context for which I mean it so um, the best way to demonstrate the metaphor uh, of you know, what I mean by that is actually to play this version of it here um, and this is a computer nerdy blog and this is the sonnet being read by uh, basically a text to voice uh, machine Sonnet 5 Those hours that with gentle work did frame the lovely gaze where every eye doth dwell will play the tyrants to the very same and that unfair which fairly doth excel for never resting time leads summer on to hideous winter and confounds him there. Sap checked with frost and lusty leaves quite gone. Beauty o'er snowed and bareness everywhere. Then were not summer's distillation left, a liquid prisoner pent in walls of glass. Beauty's effect with beauty were bereft, nor it nor no remembrance what it was. But flowers distilled Though they with winter meet, least but their show, their substance still lives sweet. So that's uh, Shakespeare's sonnet number five. Now, um, the Wikipedia article on sonnet number five goes into a, 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 an analysis of the language and uh, uh, analyzes uh, hours as seasons, and uh, uh, this is Greek. Um, mythology um, and uh, there's a lot of cork sniffing with Shakespeare but Shakespeare is really earthy and um, it's when well acted or spoken brings alive uh, the themes um, and uh, Shakespeare obviously was a brilliant poet and poets speak with metaphors they use esoteric illusion um, and finally uh, poets channel um, thoughts to meet the mind of the reader and what comes out of that is the context of the the reader's own life um, and here with this sonnet um, which was published around 1609 um we meet the context of today and this is the context in which i mean it um now i'm going to read uh the sonnet now um and you may have noticed that the word tyrants was mispronounced as tyrants now i may be doing a disservice and maybe someone did read that it's very very hard to tell but um uh text to speech um, AI is quite good but this is the point I make in this context is that we're being siloed and policed by um, AI algorithms uh, in all our internet activity um, and the way that our internet uh, internet activity is monitored is through speech to text so this is going the other way um, and then the text is uh, basically analyzed by um, text associations which are input into the algorithms to spot certain patterns um, and then those patterns are then matched up against uh, inputted threats 
or thought crime, etc. Um, poets, by definition, are thought criminals. Um, I'm a thought criminal. I'm a poet. Um, and uh, uh, so let me just read this, this now. Those hours that with gentle work did frame the lovely gaze where every eye doth dwell will play the tyrants to the very same and that unfair which fairly doth excel. For never resting time leads summer on to hideous winter and confounds him there. Sap checked with frost and lusty leaves quite gone. Beauty earth snowed and bareness everywhere. Then were not summer's distillation left, a liquid prisoner pent in walls of glass. Beauty's effect with beauty were bereft, nor it, nor no remembrance what it was. But flowers distilled, though they with winter meet, lease but their show, their substance still lives sweet. Now for me, that's about democracy's show, but the substance of democracy lives on as our democracy withers on the vine. And that's the context in which I wanted to put this sonnet at the start of this book. Uh, so that's Shakespeare's sonnet number five. And uh, I did this blog um, and, uh, in response to Alex Thompson of Eastern Approaches uh, and this article here, uh, which um, the uh, German constitutional lawyer uh, beat Barna, um, who has been detained under mental health provisions um, for uh, challenging the constitutional validity of the lockdown provisions in Germany. Um, and uh, for her troubles, she has been uh, effectively the British equivalent is, is, is sectioning under the mental health acts. Um, these provisions also exist within the coronavirus bill that was put before Parliament before it um, rested and, and, and uh, the whole zoo of MPs have gone along with it, corporate whores to a man and woman. Um, and Alex finishes this piece, this paragraph, Confinement of whistleblowers in psychiatric institutions, an old Soviet technique, has previously been reported by UK column from Lancashire in the most in our most viewed ever interview or video, an interview with social worker Carol Woods, who we understand has recently been released but remains a threat from persecutors from North Yorkshire, in the Hofbrauer case extending to Germany and Austria. From Nottinghamshire, the, uh, the case of Melanie Shaw, who is now being well looked after in another institution. And from Cornwall, the case of Emma, a mother who had reported apparent sexual grooming going on at her child's primary school. Now, UK column, column um, ha, has been very active in the Holly Greed case, which is a, a wicked, wicked case in, in, in Scotland um, with every measure of persecution. Uh, of, of all sorts of, of, of good people doing good, but going against the state mandated tyranny. Um, so this is UK column, um, uh, one o'clock UK time. So um, that's two o'clock here in Sweden. Uh, they have the news on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And if you want to keep up to um, up, up, up to speed on on, on what's going on um, from an honest news source, I highly recommend uh, UK column to anybody. Um, so there we have it. Now, this here is the famous yellow star, uh, which um, the Nazi party in Germany uh, mandated that all Jewish people in Germany should wear. 
Uh, and this quote here uh, comes from, if you click on the links as they come up, uh, this piece here, I'm streaming, so uh, it's going to take a little while just to render on my screen. Uh, Relativistic Dialectics by George Metomsky. Now, George is a, a Polish um, uh, scientist, um, and he wrote this piece on the 50th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. Um, and uh, I published this blog in April last year, April the 9th, 2019, what we're on today, April the 15th, so just over a year ago. Um, and then I updated it recently and put in COVID purpose. Now that's a, a pun on common purpose, which again is something which uh, Brian Gerrish, particularly at UK Column, is quite an expert on, and which actually an organization which prompted Brian to start UK Column. Um, some 20 years or so ago. Um, on on this point as well, if I can just put a shout out to Ian Crane, who I hope is is is, is still recovering in, in hospital, who's closely involved with UK Corum and uh, Ian's excellent organisation, Alternative View Conferences. Um, and uh, Alex Thompson, you'll find on my uh, Tone Freaks BitChute channel, a couple of talks by Alex Chirp Thompson in AV9, one of them called a, um, a, a Confounded Convergence, which uh, is an incredibly uh, insightful, insightful uh, looking into, not provoking action, insightful um, uh, look at uh, the ideology, uh, belief systems, and general perversion, general um, corruption of the value belief system of the uh, what John Ward the Slog calls the Zill Laners, uh, the brightest and the best they like to call themselves, um, the chosen. Uh, they're chosen in, in the uh, uh, Calvinist sense of unconditional election. Um, now, uh, these are all things that you'll find on my blog going into the sort of um, philosophy of these things. Um, what uh, one must guard against is, is, is the sort of thinking which has led to um, uh, Betty Barner's uh, being locked up. This idea that anyone that disagrees with you must have a mental health problem. Um, now, I encounter that living here in Sweden, it, it, it's not uncommon for people to think, oh, well, if you don't like the state, it must be something wrong with you, not not, not a genuine complaint to get against the state. Um, and you find that very much with people who, you know, will line up to do uh, the, the bidding of the uh, of the tyrants as, as jobs worth little Hitlers, etc. That's what we used to call them when I was a kid anyway. Um, so, uh, George Metanowski's piece, um, and in which he quotes Heydrich, uh, who famously said, uh, it's me who decides who is a Jew. Um, now, um, this is a link to a film called They Live, which was made in the early 80s. It's a great film. Um, in fact, um, Slavo Zizek, this, this t-shirt here, which I'm wearing, is one I designed, which is Zizek's famous comparison of ideologies in lavatories, um, actually gives a commentary on this, uh, The Pervert's Guide to Ideology. Uh, you'll find it on YouTube. Um, and then this piece I took from the Evans Experientialism uh, website, which is on the web archive, it's also on web three. I, I, made a copy and, and put it on web three um and uh this is a incredible piece which um i suppose um actually i'm going to read it and this this will be as long as it takes i i'm i'm, I'm committed now so 
So George Metanowski on the 50th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, uh, in one of the letters written to the Infeld group in Warsaw, Einstein wrote, a new manner of thinking is essential if humankind is to survive. The 50th anniversary, 50th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz has been marked by numerous celebrations and manifestations whose main purpose was to learn from Auschwitz experience in order to make its repetition impossible. Therefore, I'm asking myself, what have I learned? With respect to all I have seen, heard and read, the answer seems clear, nothing. I heard people cry and I've cried with them. I saw people mourn and I have mourned with them. I have been faced with unspeakable atrocities and I was shocked and distressed, but I have learned nothing. Knowledge, indeed, does not consist of emotions nor of particular events uh, failing to fall into a logical structure. I still ignore under which conditions new Auschwitzes may be set up or avoided. More, I do not know at all what should be understood under the Auschwitz to be avoided. Surely not the specific KZ Auschwitz, in whose place there is no new Nazi KZ to fear. When I wish to say something reasonable about birds, I start with the zoological definition with the birds principle. I'm not obliged to accept this definition and I may call it into question. One thing I cannot do, say anything reasonable about an undefined concept. When zoology still lacked the definition of birds, somebody proposing to talk about them had to supply his own definition. As there exists no Auschwitz zoology, nor a general Auschwitz principle, I would like to suggest one. Auschwitz is founded upon absolute propositions in human domain, indeed upon their absurdity, which admits any arbitrary interpretation and discrimination. Physics admits exclusively relative propositions. When we say that a stone is heavy, we imply a relation to the earth. We know that it, it, that it would be quite light on the moon that in the cosmic space its weights would totally disappear. In the human social domain, absolute propositions are equally absurd, but we lack an authority, a humanistic Galileo or Einstein, to reinforce this truth. Somebody proposing a physical theory based upon absolute propositions would simply make himself ridiculous. Doing it in the human social, he would have all chances to found an ideology, a religion, an empire. An ideology, a religion, an empire which would be based upon the Auschwitz principle, whose laws, principles and virtues would necessarily point towards an Auschwitz. I realise that I imply with these words a whole philosophic system, a humanistic relativism, which being able to justify here its principles, an interested reader may find their discussion on the site relativistic dialectic. I shall present here an example which shows the nonsense of the absolute classification criterion Jew and of the absolute proposition, this man is a Jew. From the race point of view, it is obvious nonsense as nobody has ever observed a Jewish gene. One may certainly have a Jewish culture, speak Yiddish, Hebrew or Ladino and tell Jewish jokes. However, culture is clearly a relativistic concept. Nazis may have used it as an indicator, but never as an essential, absolute criterion of discrimination. A large part of Jews murdered in Auschwitz had little or nothing to do with the Jewish culture. Some were Catholic priests. Some have heard for the first time from the Nazis or from the blackmailers that they were Jews. The criterion of the Jewish religion is equally absurd. According to the Jewish law, a Jew who has a Jewish mother or who has been converted by a Jewish rabbi. However, in order to be sure that my mother is Jewish, I have to ascertain that she had herself a Jewish mother or had been converted by a Jewish rabbi. The same holds, of course, for the converting rabbi, a clear case of a vicious circle. Consequently, the absolute concept Jew is empty and as such may get any arbitrary meaning Heydrich understood it perfectly when he declared, Ver Jude ist ein Scheidich. It's me who decides who is a Jew. If we want to avoid Auschwitz in the future, we must abolish situations in which a human being 
may classify and discriminate other ones upon absolute ab arbitrary criteria. In other words, we must extend the relativistic reason over the human social domain and may admit only relative demonstrable propositions in this domain as well. This calls, of course, into question nearly all established ideological and political structures, which are based upon absolute principles. We live in an Auschwitz friendly world, and if we want to avoid Auschwitz in the future, we have to call into question its essential principles. But do we want it really? Now, that's an incredibly powerful um, example of what we're all facing here with this idea of the clean and the unclean, those with the antibodies to the virus, those who are vaccinated and given papers and allowed to circulate freely in open society and those without. And this is the essence of fascism and I'll tell you why it's arbitrary. Um, the diagnosis of the so-called coronavirus, COVID-19, is based upon a probabilistic model and a synthesis of genetic material from the body and is likely as not to provide a false positive. And so the piece of paper allowing one to be declared clean, the yellow star, if you like, will be a sign of cleanness rather than of, uh, uh, of uh, um, being excluded as the yellow star was. And um, or even more uh, sinister than that, that it will be implanted um, there's a thing called wetware, which is um, this idea that uh, people can be injected with uh, um, uh, nano dust, I think they call it, which will transmit um, and can be imprinted with the code of, uh, well, the code of the tyranny. Some people are talking about things like the mark of the beast and all the rest of it, which are all very, very useful metaphors, if you like for um, this idea of allowed people the clean and banned people the unclean. And um, if you look at the banning laws in South Africa, for instance, you'll find a very rich theme or, 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 or model by which this current form of fascism is being instituted. The other model you'll find is uh, in Chile, in uh, the... Uh, early 1970s there's a documentary on my code freaks channel as well about um uh, that was made undercover two years into the um into the pinochet regime there uh, and the parallels with um this sort of modern elite dystopia which uh, is being cooked up for us um by uh bill gates in his uh pharmacological um vaccine ovens if you like uh we're, we're in great prep peril here everybody um and, and we must listen to these voices from the past uh that went through this um these voices such as uh, george uh, metanowski etc um so let's get back to the blog um so when I originally put this up, it was about Brexiteers being um, being told they were thick, um, about people being climate deniers. If you think back to AIDS denialism, I've done quite a lot of blogs on that recently. There's um, also a documentary on my Tone Free channel called False Positives, and that talks about uh, the HIV testing. Um, and... Uh, the idea that the HIV virus is actually something that was developed by humans. We see a similar story with this COVID-19 business um, and that it is racially uh, targeted 
Um, you'll find that in uh, Louis Farrakhan's work, Nation of Islam. Um, uh, and not there alone. I've noticed that uh, uh, Fauci the other day was talking about how uh, more uh, uh, African Americans are finding uh, that they are vulnerable to these uh, uh, this alleged disease. Um, and uh, uh, my go-to on the context of um, Jim Crow laws, etc., and uh, uh, how that American society um, has uh, dealt a very uh, low card to Black Africans, uh, African Americans, um, is Cornell West, and uh, I, I recommend um, uh, reading his book *Race Matters*, for instance. Um, but I, I, I'm going off point here a bit. So, uh, COVID-19 denier list, AIDS denier list, climate denier, heretic, 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 burn the witch. So, in the new fascist EUSSR, climate deniers will bring yellow seas and yellow bees in yellow starred armbands. And then I link to this blog, this machine, uh, which is actually by a medieval linguist um, who's uh, a professor at Copenhagen University, uh, Ulf Erdström. And Ulf actually um, does the Bob Dylan um, tab site um, and uh, has done tablatures for just about every version of every recorded Bob Dylan song. It's a fantastic site, but he's also a, um, his blog. Uh, is called uh, Things Twice. But this particular one um, is linked to here, this machine. If you click on that, you'll go to it. Uh, but this quote out of the middle of here. What happened here was the gradual habituation of the people, little by little, to being governed by surprise, to receiving decisions deliberated in secret, to believing that the situation was so complicated that the government had to act on information which the people could not understand or so dangerous that even if the people could understand it could not be released because of national security and their sense of identification with he put in Obama here their trust in him made it easier to widen this gap and reassured those who would otherwise have worried about it that was actually written about um, the rise of the Nazis um, and uh, um, so it's, it proposes a number of tests. So let's just go to, to, to these tests now. I'm going to open. Oh, actually, I've already got it open. I've saved the rendering. So, um, so it starts with this. Uh, um, this quote isn't originally about Obama, although every single part of the statement can be found explicitly or indirectly in the government defense in the Snowden NSA scandal. Replace Obama with Hitler and you have the original. It's from Milton Mayer's classic, They Thought They Were Free, The Germans, 1933 to 45. And the words are those of a university colleague of the author explaining the ever widening gap after 1933 between the government and the people. Oh, well, maybe the USA isn't a fascist state after all. We'll see what happens with the Congress vote about Syria. Now, the original date of this blog um, was back in September 2013. Um, and here, here, here are um, uh, the indicators that, that we were advised uh, to uh, keep an eye on by uh, EO. Ulf uh, Erström, he, he, his father's a Norwegian professor as well. He's a native Norwegian, although teaches in, in, in Denmark. Um, so some indices to keep an eye on. The manipulation of democratic institutions by a relatively small group of people in power. Check. The level of secrecy, including the passing of secret laws to be used by secret courts. Check. Julian Assange, anyone. The close ties between governmental and cooperative interests 
with huge economic resources. As Mussolini put it, fascism should more properly be called corporatism because it is the merger of state and corporate power. World Health Organization and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, anyone? Check. The use of police force and judiciary persecution to stifle opposition and critical investigation. The prosecution of Barrett, Brown, Chelsea Manning and not yet consummated Glenn, Glenn Glee, Greenwald and Edward Snowden. Well, what were we just reading, ladies and gentlemen? Um, we were just talking about uh, the constitutional lawyer in Germany. Um, the percentage of GMP spent on military and police. Check. The skilled use of Orwellian doublespeak. Stay at home to defend your NHS. Perfect. Um, so you can actually see here, I'm quite fond of this uh, blog and I've got pingbacks. Uh, this is Damon Brabel. Uh, let's just click on them and see if they're working. Uh, they're, they're, um, so they're the two thoughts on, on this blog. Uh, let's just see where this leads us. Um, meet Damon Brable. John G doesn't like him. Be like Damon Brable, not like John G. Um, and these, this, these are from back in at the height of the Occupy movement. Um, he's an ex, uh, he's a veteran of the US military and of, uh, various uh, military intelligence organizations um, and this series of videos is very very good on the system that, that, that we are now um, finding stamping on our faces um, and then the other one uh, was this one a uh, canoe alive and what and living in IPCC land spotted at Davos uh, the Davos output World Economic Forum searches for global chaos culprits fails to look in mirror. And that's my friend John Ward on the slog talking about Davos. Um, so that's this machine. Um, so this is Woody Guthrie, the famous Woody Guthrie, who uh, this land is our land famous song from the 1930s depression area uh, era united states and here we have barry barry fake obama um who is a way bigger fascist than than than, than president donald trump um uh this man is a fascist um the only toss-up is between him bill clinton really and uh tony blair for who, who's the worst um bush the first is probably in their league bush the second useful idiot um uh dick cheney now there's a there, there's there's a corporate uh, fascist whore for you ladies and gentlemen um so donald rumsfeld another one known unknowns anyone so let's get back to the blog shall we um so this machine and uh this quote here so then, then we come to this now this is interesting um there was not a shred of evidence that the claimant was at risk of committing a criminal offense the effect of the police turning up at his place of work because of his political opinions must not be underestimated to do so would be to undervalue a cardinal democratic freedom in this country we have never had a checker a Gestapo or a Stasi. We have never lived in an Orwellian society. Um, well, that's from this court case, uh, which was uh, this is the judgment, 14th of February 2020. Um, and uh, it's a very, very good uh, uh, judgment, in, uh, which. which um, is to do with this case here. Uh, here we are, let's just bring that up. Something just flashed on my screen, saying being there of uh, false information. I hope that's not mine. Right, Bellingcat fascism. 
Sturmat Eiplung Hope, not hate, tilting at windmills. Hope, not hate, and Harry Miller. And that's the Harry Miller case uh, where the course went, where, where the police went round to check his thinking. Um, and then Hope, not hate, produced this video in which they named this list of people here. Um, now, some of these names may or may not be familiar to you. Mark Windows of Windows on the Wall, a World, um, uh, Piers Corbin, Gillard Altsman, Alison Schultz, Shablos, Nicholas Colstrom, David Irving, Vanessa Dealey, Ian Phantom, James Thring, Michelle Renouf, uh, Stead Stedman and Peter Gregson. Now, these are all people that you, if you have stepped outside of the mainstream media safe silos uh, that you may have come across. Um, I've written about, read uh, a lot of the work of a lot of these people. Gillad's a fantastic uh, saxophonist, uh, but also an incredible, he's a very good philosopher. Um, uh, Alison Shablow, she's a great singer, writes good songs, uh, some of which I find pretty offensive. Um, and one of her offensive ones did get her into trouble. Uh, but, uh, you know, free speech. I mean, uh, 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 just you can search that on my blog and see what I think about Alison Shablow's. Um, you know, I, I like her as a woman. In fact, I quite fancy her. But, but I, you know, I, 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 uh, I think she's been driven towards a, um, kind of, well, I don't know, really. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I think she did write one song, which I think was anti-Semitic. But then again, um, uh, if people don't like Jews, that's that's their business. I don't care if they don't like me or not. It doesn't bother me. Um, so uh, w w where I get pissed off is if they start rounding me up and, 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 and sending me off to uh, somewhere to get either re-educated or uh, um, otherwise terminated. Um, so, yeah. And, and so here we go. I with Vanessa Beely. Uh, I exchanged views with her on Twitter once or twice. Um, you'll find that in the blog. Um, Ian Phantom. I like Ian Phantom, and I like Nicholas Collestrom as well. Collestrom wrote um, uh, a book um, about the Holocaust and hypnotism and, and, and what have you. Um, there's a better book than his called The Gas Chambers of Sherlock Holmes, which is very, very good. Um, and uh, uh, of course, what they're really questioning is official narratives um, and official narratives that serve a useful period uh, 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 to, to, to uh, stop people from cottoning on to current extant ongoing uh, nefarious activities um, and I think that's David Irving's uh, crime as well because he's a very good historian um, and uh, um, I mean I don't think he's uh, I I mean what these people are what they think what thought crimes are, what you have to do is read what they've written and then check out whether they've tried to mislead or whatever um, I mean, even Deborah Lipstadt doesn't think that um, uh, anti-Semitism thought crime or, you know, sh should be outlawed, um, censorship, etc. Um, and I think she's right about that. I think she's wrong about uh, David Irving. And I think she's wrong about several particular historic facts about the Holocaust, uh, but, you know, the Holocaust, what we know as the Holocaust, undoubtedly existed. Um, and I think that the powers that be are about to try and perpetrate another one. Um, but uh, uh, getting bogged down in, 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 in some of the small particulars of people's arguments rather than, you know, the general picture, um, it, it, it is exactly what the propagandists in charge of misinformation streams if you like uh, uh, that's what they're trying to do um actually if i remember i i will um actually i'm going to do that now because uh, i I've, i did do a blog about how i deal with um you know you know when when, when i'm uh confronted with 
anti-Semitic ignorance. I, I, I just deal with it head on uh, much in this way. Now, this is the Ban David Icke interview. OK. Um, and uh, I mean, that's a lot of views on my channel, uh, but but it actually on the website of London Real, it's had about 800,000 views and on David Icke's um, Bit, BitChute channel, it, it, it's, it, it must be getting on for a million views by now. Um, but there are links to both those so you can look um, now. Uh, but but it's this comment here. If, if we look at this, right, just the first couple of comments here. So uh, David Icke is describing the fulfillment of the Talmud, mass exterminations and the total enslavement of the world. Population events of the last two centuries have been calculated stepping stones towards this with only one possible suspect group. Now, uh, the suspect group that this guy is pointing to um, I have a feeling he might be saying, oh, the Jews. Um, uh, it doesn't out, out and out say it. Uh, and then this guy says, are you referring to the Protocols of Elders of Zion, Zog? Now, now I don't know these people. These are just random comments on my blog. Um, but I, whatever they're referring to, I, you know, um, I don't know. Uh, but I just made my comment and, and, and uh, their opinions, their opinions. This is my uh, response to those two comments. So I'm going to read these. So David Icke's position on they, the hierarchy that enslaves you, um, draws a, 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 on a lot of sources. His current position refers to the Sabbatian Frankist cult or what Moad Dib calls the counterfeit Jews. The protocols are generally thought to have been a Russian dreamt up agent provocateur ruse along the lines of the Golden Shower Steel Report, nothing new under the sun. The watchword for the magics of occult hypnotism is divide and rule and befuddle all. A good distinction to make is also as between the religious and pious and the ecclesiastics. Those for whom religion is a political power structure and those who have a wavelength with the I am of the Abrahamic faiths. In this distinction, Jesuits, Herzl, Netanyahu, Zionists and Islamist jihadists can be seen as mere political parties with no love of God contained within them. And then I link to my kids film, uh, the, the, the Nazi bankers crimes, ripple effect final DVD. And there's um, a link to that on my channel and you can also find it on the Wayback Machine, uh, the Internet Archive, and then a link to Murdiv's site at J for Justice. So then this is the description of 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 uh, that film. Uh, Murdiv, Ripple Effect 77, J for Justice, Nazi, Bankster, Bush, Pope, Hitler, Truth, Justice, Freedom, Bible, Inside Job, Truth, New World Order, Elite. V for Vendetta, Illuminati, Conspiracy Theory, blah. So, Mo Dibbs' latest hard-hitting documentary about the innumerable crimes of the Ashkenazi bankers, from their historical origins down to their planned genocidal future. Mo Dib tracks who they are, how they operate, and most importantly, how to get rid of them once and for all. Um, so this is going back to the time of Occupy, um, 5th of November 2012, etc. Um, so uh, now Mo Dib, similar to uh, the constitutional lawyer in uh, Germany at the moment, um, uh, let, let's just name check that again. I, I'm, I'm very keen to uh, just make sure that we are aware. There she is there. I'm going to keep that open so I can refer back to it because uh, here we are. <coughs> Betty, or Betty uh, Barna. Okay. Um, so where uh, was I? We were down here, and I'm just going to go back to that comment because I haven't finished with that yet. Um, let's just get back to where we were. This is the Harry Miller case. Harry Miller case. And we were just talking about this comment here. So uh, then I go on. 
they, the hierarchy enslaving you, Morris Jolie, elements of the protocol of uh, protocols are plagiarized from Jolie's fictional dialogue in Hell, a thinly veiled attack on the political ambitions of Napoleon III, who, who represented by the non-Jewish character Machiavelli, plots to rule the world. So there's a whole bunch of stuff on this and where they've done textual analysis and all the rest of it. So yes, it's probably plagiarized from there, uh, but it's the purpose behind the forgery where things start to get interesting. So if you stop with, oh, it was a forgery, so who forged it, why did they forge it, and what were they trying to do? And then this then, I link to uh, this video I made, Say Yes to Life, Free Will and Liberty, which is talking about the um, the basis of um, Christianity in Ireland uh, and Murdib, who sort of moved there, uh, uh, and then this druid, uh, Ben McBrady, um, etc., and um, Kelvin over on the uh, Irish Bard, he, his poem, um, The Return of the Fairies, uh, uh, is amazing. Um, and uh, uh, Ben McBrady talks about uh, Pel Pelagius, he calls him, I call him Pelagius, who was an Irish monk who uh, had a huge row with St. Augustine. Um, and when the Nicene Creed was sort of getting going, etc. Um, so uh, the religious belief structures of ecclesiastical Christianity of um, formal Judaism as opposed to uh, secular and uh, lay Judaism, uh, but also in Islam, it's a complicated dynamic and uh, you need to look at the political structures of religion on one part and then the personal relationship of individual um, Christians, Jews and Muslims with the great I am, the one I am, Yahweh, God, uh, Jehovah, um, Allah, um, etc. Oh, he who must not be named, uh, which is another, another one. Uh, but anyway, so so there we are. That 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 that's that's that. Um, and so you know, these two comments here, uh, you know, hopefully they'll get something from that and maybe learn something. Um, I haven't learn anything from their two comments i was rather hoping they might come back and teach me something but but uh, you know we can we live in hope uh so that's that's what i was getting at there so uh then i put in this bit here i i wrote three poems uh, epic poems and i'm still writing my novel the conquest of dough um which i'm kind of thinking of writing as an epic poem now going about i don't like writing prose uh but anyway next um this is talking about the uh, dadaist cut-up technique and da da dadaist poems now the dada movement was an anarchist art movement that grew up in the 1920s and 1930s uh, as fascism sort of rose etc um and my poem globalism uh unentangled is a, a cut up poem um and uh i wrote this poem in 2016 usually helps fuel man's oppressor and then i wrote this one about a year later called bourgeois resolution um uh which talks about a resolution to harmony as opposed to a revolution just let's go around again every re revolution with revolution repeats the same mistakes of previous revolutions etc uh so and then this this introduction to alexander pope's an essay on man uh, which was published by henry morley uh, uh is is very very good uh and it says uh read reader for yourself without once pausing to remember what you have been told to think. Now, it's very important at this point in time is to come into contact with a lot of new information that may be happening to a lot of people at the moment, 
um, and uh, triangulate. Go and look at people that have taken an opposing view. Look at the sanctioned state narrative and triangulate for your own experience because that's the gray space. How it is for you is how it is for you. That's unique. And to get some sort of uh, idea of where reality fits into the great jigsaw puzzle of life, um, you know, your piece of the jigsaw, without it, the jigsaw is incomplete. Um, but it is in a specific point in time and space and frequency, etc. So, uh, you know, think about that. But I, I, I really like that. It is uh, uh, Alexander Pope's S.L. Man's worth reading, um, but that's a nice bit of, of that uh, publishes introduction to it. So then we get on to the nature of totalitarianism, um, which is from Hannah Arendt, uh, her essays uh, in understanding. The lies of totalitarian movements invented for the moment, as well as the forgeries committed by totalitarian regimes, are secondary to the fundamental attitude that excludes the very distinction between truth and falsehood. It is for this end that is for the constancy of a lying world order, rather than for the sake of power or any other humanly understandable sinfulness, that totalitarianism requires total domination and global rule and is prepared to commit crimes which are unprecedented in the long and sinful history of mankind. This and the preceding 10 paragraphs are from the manuscript entitled Ideology and Propaganda. Um, in this series of essays, a link there um, on the nature of totalitarianism. So, and then I go on to say, if one throws in Arendt's observations of the importance of the separation of powers in functioning states and the failure of the fourth estate, one gets to a dystopian Rovian turn in a peculiar anti-historicity where facts and reason become the enemy of raw power. All the while, the masses as Nero fiddle whilst Rome burns. Um, can't beat a good bit of onanism. Um, and I, I did a blog called Rome in Turn. And it, Karl Rove uh, coined this thing, Actors in History, uh, reality-based communities, etc., which is narrative management, where, where the narrative... The, the famous saying, the medium is the message. Um, anyway, so so then going on, going back to 2012, um, Blut and Bohn, that's blood and land, the narcissism of small differences in group bias. Um, and uh, this is this thing here. Uh, Vernant Wharton nach urban authoritat noch unten, responsibility towards above, authority towards below, Freudian theory and pattern of fascist propaganda. And then there's this, this bit here, um, and this is all taken uh, from this here. Let's see if that link still works. Deletion notice. Oh, right, let's just go here. And we will find it on the way back machine. Hopefully. There she blows. Uh, So this site was deleted for whatever reason. Let's see if I can. Anyway, that's taken from from that. So. Here's, here's a PDF of it. Theodore W. Adorno, um, and uh, written in 1951. This essay systemizes the author's extensive work in the 40s um, and goes into all this stuff. 
and uh, so you'll find that um, and that's where that comes from and then this is a section of it which um, I'm just going to read out now this is the ultimate root of the otherwise enigmatic personalization of fascist propaganda its incessant plugging of names and supposedly great men instead of discussing objective causes the formation of the imagery of an omnipotent and unbridled father figure by far transcending the individual father and therewith apt to be enlarged into a group ego is the only way to promulgate the passive masochistic attitude to whom one's will has to be surrendered an attitude required of the fascist follower the more his political behavior becomes irreconcilable with his own rational interests as a private person, as well as those of a group or class to which he actually belongs. They fail to develop an independent, autonomous conscience and substitute for it an identification with collective authority, which is as irrational as Freud described it. Heteronymous, rigidly oppressive, largely alien to the individual's own thinking, and therefore easily exchangeable in spite of its structural rigidity. The phenomenon is adequately expressed in the Nazi formula that what serves the German people is good. The pattern reoccurs in the speeches of American fascist demagogues who never appeal to their prospective followers' own conscience, but incessantly invoke external conventional and stereotyped values which are taken for granted and treated as authoritatively valid without ever being subject to a process of living experience or discursive examination. The fascists, down to the last small-time demagogue, continuously emphasize ritualistic ceremonies and hierarchical differentiations. The less hierarchy within the setup of a highly rationalized and quantified industrial society is warranted, the more artificial hierarchies with no objective raison d'etre are built up and rigidly imposed by fascists for purely psychotechnical reasons. Hitler's famous formula, Verantwortung nach urban Authoritat nach unten, responsibility towards above, authority towards below, nicely rationalized this character's ambivalence. This is the line pursued by the agitator's standard unity trick. They emphasize their being different from the outsider, but play down such differences within their own group and tend to level out distinctive qualities among themselves with the exception of the hierarchical one. We are all in the same boat. Nobody should be better off. The snob, the intellectual, the pleasure seeker are always attacked. The undercurrent of malicious egalitarianism of the brotherhood of all comprising humil humiliation is a component of fascist propaganda and fascism itself. It found its symbol in Hitler's notorious command of the item gericht. Right. So next we get to Emmanuel Goldstein. Um, and uh, that links to this blog here, which is the theory and practice of oligarchical collectivism by Emmanuel Goldstein. Um, followed by the quote that translators are the false horses of the enlightenment uh, by pushkin uh, the famous uh, russian poet and uh, writer so gets the direction of travel of where we are headed and certainly where we have been if you want a picture of the future imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever george orwell 1984 the context of this quote in 1984 comes from the dialogue between Winston and O'Brien, when O'Brien explains the second stage of reinterrogation. There are three stages in your interrogation, says O'Brien. There is learning, there is understanding, and there is acceptance. It is for you to enter upon the second stage. The dial also had grown to be less of a terror. He could evade its pangs if he was quick-witted enough. It was chiefly when he showed stupidity that O'Brien pulled the lever. Sometimes they get through a whole session without use of the dial. He could not remember how many sessions there had been. The whole process seemed to stretch out over a long, indefinite time. Do you remember writing in your diary, 
I understand how, I do not understand why. It was when you thought about why that you doubted your own sanity. You have read the book, Goldstein's book, or parts of it, at least. Did it tell you anything that you did not know already? You have read it, said Winston. I wrote it. That, that is to say, I collaborated in writing it. No book is produced individually, as you know. Is it true what it says? A description, yes. The programme it sets forth is nonsense. The secret accumulation of knowledge, a gradual spread of enlightenment, ultimately a proletarian rebe rebellion, the overthrow of the party. You saw yourself that that was what it would say. It is all nonsense. The proletarians will never revolt. Not in a thousand years or a million. They cannot. I do not have to tell you the reason. You know it already. If you have ever cherished any dreams of violent insurrection, you must abandon them. There is no way in which the party can be overcome. The rule of the party is forever. Make that the starting point of your thoughts. Well, let's not do that, people. That's O'Brien to Winston. And um, make the starting point of your thoughts um, Shelley's uh, observation that uh, we are many, they are few. This is the sinful observation that uh, David Icke made in the band London Real Talk. Um, the powers that be want to put you in a little box, um, a littler box than the box that they're in. You come outside of that box and they're locked in their uncreative um, two-dimensional thinking, their nature read in tooth and claw thinking, their loveless, joyless, profitful in a purely pecuniary sense um, but they're, 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 they're adject emptiness um, on that there's a quote from Paolo Freire which which, which, um, uh, which I'm just gonna just gonna pull up here and do at this stage I think because uh, when I'm making that point it just comes to uh, I think it's one that I'm making what this blog ends with in the uh, Iron Law of Oligarchy blog, which I did back in 2016. Um, let's have a wee look. Yeah, it is in this one. Look. Um, Let's just have a look here. There we go. Uh, It's that the oppressor's own. Uh, uh, I don't want to misremember it. Um, something like the oppressing cla class um only have they sort of they no longer are i.e they're not in the moment they don't live uh, a life um you know all their existence is contingent on having um and which means that they can't become uh, I, i'm you'll find it if you look for it, 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 it uh, 
Um, so that that's uh, the starting points of your thoughts. Um, don't take O'Brien's uh, advice. So on camel toes and camel's noses, um, I decided to do some research on the thin end of the wedge, the slippery slope, the camel's nose, not toe. Anyway, it's the camel's toes in power that have surely got their foot well and truly in the door. Um, so this is then from They Thought They Were Three by Milton Mayer. Uh, your friend the baker was right, said my colleague. The dictatorship and the whole process of its coming into being was above all diverting. It provided an excuse not to think for people who did not want to think anyway. I do not speak of your little men, your baker and so on. I speak of my colleagues and myself, learned men. Mind you, most of us did not want to think about fundamental things and never had. There was no need to. Um, having just failed to find the Paolo Freire uh, quote, I'm just going to find another one from uh, Ortega, uh, which is... Um, talking about uh, specialization and, and ignorance uh, and, and this is sort of compartments or whatever so this is my blog uh, for the conquest of the novel which I've just said uh, um, was going to uh, uh, right let's have a quick look at this um, it's at the bottom of one of the pages there Not that one. Actually, on this page, there's a... Right. Uh, this is an online book, which I don't think got published. Uh, if you're digging up history, you have to dig it all up. If they dig up 60 years, I will dig up 600. If we go back far enough in the history, always there will be some grievance. And I'll fight on him. I'll fight on you. I'll fight on everyone. Where is the beginning? I cannot find it. Dig up all the problems of you will find they have a root cause in one place, greed. Where there is greed, there is no satisfaction. Um, this is uh, Guru Guruji quoted uh, from Towards Unity by Stuart Hastings. There's a link there, uh, which will go to the Wayback Machine. Um, uh, let's just have a look see if I can find this. Uh, yeah, here it is. Here, look. Right. Chapter 12, The Barbarism of Specialization. The specialist serves as a striking concrete example of the species, making clear to us the radical nature of the novelty. For previously, men could be divided simply into the learned and the ignorant, those more or less the one and those more or less the other. But your specialist cannot be brought in under either of these two categories. He is not learned, for he is formally ignorant of all that does not enter into his speciality. But neither is he ignorant because he is a scientist and knows very well his own tiny portion of the universe. We shall have to say that he is a learned ignoramus, which is a very serious matter as it implies that he is a person who is ignorant, not in the fashion of the ignorant man, but with, an, with the petulance of one who is learned in his own special line. Uh, you know, Jose Ortega um, And then this is one of my favorite books this is letters from mesopotamia by leo oppenheim um, and this is his quote from the same writer to read a book is like all the other really human occupations a utopian task i call utopian every action whose initial intention cannot be fulfilled in the development of its activity and which has to be satisfied with approximations essentially contradictory to the purpose which has started it Thus, to read begins by signifying the project of understanding a text fully. Now, this is impossible. It is only possible with a great effort to extract a more or less important portion of what the text has tried to say, communicate, make known. But there will always remain an illegible residue. It is, on the other hand, probable that while we are making this effort, we may read at the same time into the text. That is, we may understand things which the author has not meant to say, and nevertheless he has said them, he has presented them to us involuntarily, even more against his professed purpose. And that's what I was saying about jigsaw puzzles earlier um, and triangulating, uh, and, and that's what Duchamp called the grey space. And the grey space is the channel which um, poets 
download and re-upload and they're points of focus a poem is a point of focus drawing attention to a particular set of of, of, of imagery um, and can't be completed it, it's a little bit like uh, bishop uh, uh, Bar Barclay and, 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 and the uh, uh, the tree falling in the wood, or what's the sound of one hand clapping? Uh, you know, the, the uh, um, beauties in the eye of the beholder uh, is is their beauty without observers, etc. That's all the same sort of idea, um, and uh, all of that happens absent the state, absent corporations, absent any ideology. Um, in a very real sense, every individual completes the universe for them. This is uh, what Blake is getting at about uh, see the universe in a single grain of sand. Um, so anyway, that, I, I don't want to get sort of into too much sort of uh, poetic stuff. Um, well, I do, but I'm not going to. Right, so here we go. That's the theory of practice of oligarchy, collectivism by Emmanuel Goldstein, translators of false sources of it. It's like, right. Um, and here's another Pushkin. A fiction that elevates my soul is dearer to me than a host of base and despicable truths. Uh, and then what I've done is I've just, um, there are various blogs. When a term, on one of the headlines that I put in the titles of my blogs come up, there are usually s several other blogs. And this is what I've done here, collectivism. And uh, if you click on that, you'll get this page, which has got various blogs, which uh, feed back into the, 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 the context of the current time. These present discontents. Now, that that's an allusion to uh, Edmund Burke and his famous speech in the House of Commons in the 1700s. Uh, about these present discontents, a um, breakdown of um, the uh, interface between power and politics and the people. It's broken down at the moment. I, I did a blog at the time of um, uh, the last election talking about the thermostat being disconnected. You know, the, the um, you'll find it if you look for it. And then I wrote this block about the, the iron law of oligarchy, which is linked to, and then this one, Wittgenstein. And I'm just going to dip into this one uh, because at the end of it, there's a, on the grey space, um, there, there's a uh, Wittgenstein, there's a, a, a friend, put a quote um, at the end of it, getting to this same point. Um, Uh, where are we? Is this the one? Yeah, here it is. Well, there are a couple here. They're very good. Right. You won't, I really believe, get too much out of reading it because you won't understand it. The context will seem strange to you. In reality, it isn't strange to you, for the point is ethical. I once wanted to give a few words in the foreword, which now actually are not in it which, however, I'll write to you now because they might be a key for you. I wanted to write that my work consists of two parts, of the one which is here and of everything which I have not written. And precisely the second part is the important one. Um, so he, that, that's uh, uh, a letter he wrote to a guy called Ludwig von Ficker. Um, and then uh, this one, Remember that we sometimes demand explanations for the sake, not of their content, but of their form. Our requirement is an architectural one. The explanation, a kind of sham corbel that supports nothing. Uh, COVID-19, anyone. Um, and then this famous one, what is your aim in philosophy to show the fly the way out of the bottle? Um, and in a sense, that's what we're all trying to do, it, it, it is guide each other out of this uh internet kettling that's going on um this is a link to a handy 
Occupy booklet talking about staying safe online, uh, VPNs, etc., various uh, non spyware where free software that you can download. Uh, I, I use Ubuntu Linux, which is um, compromised in lots of ways, but it's way better than Windows or, 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 or uh, Apple. Um, but you can download that guide, look, take a look. So it's, it's well worth a look. Um, that's that. Let's just carry on. Um, times like these, Epictetus. And then we finish uh, with this here. This blog is not loading the like button, which uh, whenever I do a blog, which is offending the censorship algorithms, that always happens. Um, whether it will fix itself or whether I can go to the code and fix it remains to be seen. But let's just play this to play ourselves out. Rise like lions after slumber in unvanquishable number. Shoot your chains to earth like dew, which in sleep had fallen on you. Ye are many, they are few. Ye are many, they are few. Amen to that. <laughs>